Good morning, Connection Church. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Lord God, we invite you to be present today. Holy Spirit, have your way with us this morning. Eyes wide, I'm set on you. You made a road in the wild, standing on ancient truth. I'm pressing on with my back to the past. Oh, let the young see visions of the future. And I say, no, oh, let the old dream dreams again. In my world, God, do a new thing. I know you're moving. In my world, a chain reaction. God. Our 
heart sink and stride with you. Bursting like heaven in motion, Jesus, you make me new. I'm pressing on, turn right back to the past. Oh, let the young see visions of the future, and I say, oh. Praise you, Lord God. Lord God, we worship you this morning. We open ourselves up to you, Holy Spirit. Speak through us, Holy Spirit. We stand in unity with you. Have your way with us, Holy Spirit. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures and faith, never enough. You came along, and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's not. still call me Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Turn morning to dancing. You 
You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. There's nothing better. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn into gardens, you turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing Worship him. better than you, oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing better than you. Better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Nothing is better than you. There's nothing better. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Nothing is better than you. Nothing is better than Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to do some communion here this week. And uh, if you would please get your bread and wine or juice ready to go. Mine is ready to go. Right. I was thinking about the uh, communion today and, and uh, preparing and, you know, what am I going to say? I could just read the scriptures and we could just be done with it all. But, uh, but I, I believe the Holy Spirit said, let's remember some things. And uh, the words in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, the words of Jesus, he says, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So let's remember a few things yeah. real quick, like if we could this morning. I think a lot of times we tend to forget uh, what Jesus did for us. But what he did for us was provide every answer in life we will ever need. And... Um, so we're going to do that. What did the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus do for all of mankind? First, he was, he was paying the price for our precious salvation, making the only pathway to the Father. A new life, born again, a new identity. Uh, John 3.16, it says, we know the verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What else? Physical healing. 1 Peter 2.24, it said, by whose stripes you were healed. Freedom from he provided freedom from demonic power and oppression, Amen. bad habits, Amen. curses, yeah. all those things. Amen. 
Mark 16, 17, Jesus said, In my name shall they cast out devils. John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free. Indeed. Little King James there for you. So I'd like to just, I mean, we could go on and on all day, but Pastor Jerry has to come up here. It's going to be so good. But the Bible says that before you take communion, it says it's important to reflect and to clear your conscience before God. So I'd like to take a few moments of silence, and if you would do that along with me, uh, we'll just uh, clear our conscience before God before we partake of communion. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. It says, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we can take the bread. Thank you for the sacrifice of your body. It goes on, verse 25. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you do it. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. You can take the juice. Father God, thank you for giving your son Jesus for us. We thank you for the new covenant, for the blood of Jesus that was shed for that new covenant. We thank you, Lord, that we have better promises established uh, 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 on, on, on this new covenant, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you for the, all that you do. Help us to remember that you have given us the answers to everything that we face in life. In Jesus' name. Worship Him. Worship Him. You are worthy, Lord God, of our praise. You are worthy, Lord God. Of our praise. praise you, Lord God. We 
we worship you, Lord God. Holy Lord, we worship you. Praise you, Lord. Sing it from your heart. Sing to you. We worship you, Lord God. We praise your name. Blessed is your name, Lord God. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy, holy Lord. Praise you. Here I am. Here I am. Worship team continues to minister 
Let's extend this out just a little bit. Just be in your own little world right now. Just you and the Holy Spirit, just here together. I know you got people to the left of you. You got people to the right of you. You may be at home listening, but right now it's you and the Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Jesus. Here I am. Here I am. now as you're in his presence take every thought captive that is not of him anything that's a distraction anything that causes you to think about anything else but him take that thought captive as the word says you can do and toss it out Jesus we put our eyes and focus on you the author and perfecter of our faith Father, we know that's how we're gathered together corporately. You can do more in an instant than we could do on our own in a thousand years. So, Father, I speak healing over people's bodies at this very moment. Yes. Father God, as you move across us, Lord, physical healing, as Pastor Dan reminded us in communion, that's what you took those stripes for. That new covenant you have with us, that you're there every step of the way. Emotional healing, yes. financial healing, strength in our yes. bodies, everything we need to do, Lord, you've cleared a path and made a way for us. Father God, we recognize now there is no distraction in our lives except you. You are our full attention. We focus on you, Jesus, and we take authority over every thought that would try and just steer us away from you. Father, for this next season, this next few moments, as we, as we pray, as we hear the word, as we continue to worship, Lord, we know, Holy Spirit, you're going to be speaking to us. We sense your presence, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, you don't want to be too disruptive, but I want you to say hi. To your, that's part of relation. That's part of Jesus, too. Notice the people around you. Say hello to them. Greet them. It's so good to be together. Worship team, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Uh, as we're getting settled in here, and we're just kind of getting settled into what the Holy Spirit would have for us today. And, and if you're listening online, you just kind of get settled into what the Lord would have you to do today. But I know one thing for sure, and that's he's here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for being a part of, of our gathering today and, and what God wants to do. We are grateful, aren't we, for every step of the way. Again, I don't want it to be too disruptive. Just a couple little quick announcements because I want to jump right into the Word today. And I just want you to, as I give a couple announcements, I want you to pay attention but recognize these aren't that important right now compared to what God wants to do, all right? But this is just part of living here in these physical bodies. So just a couple of them coming up. Go ahead, Peyton. Our first one coming up is, is we do have growth track step two today. So if you have not taken step two, you join me in room I, me and Miss Cindy, and we'll, we will uh, go through step two today. It's always the second week. Third week is step three, and then we do it all again next month. And then the next announcement is something to be excited about is Pastor Christian's going to minister to us next week, all right? Remember? We were going to, and we had that crazy thing called an ice storm, and so, uh, so, so, so we didn't have regular church that day. A lot of you had church at home. Alan, Mary, and Cindy and I had church here at the church. We just we made it, and so we had church, and uh, but it was a crazy time. And so uh, anyway, uh, so that's happening the week after next, and I think that's about it for announcements, isn't it? And so I just want to kind of have you kind of stay kind of an attitude of um, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're kind of making a shift because you may not realize it, but in three weeks, the greatest Sunday of all that we celebrate, all right? Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Don't get, don't get in a fight over what you call it. Some people get real upset. Just lay down everything, all right? Find common ground, all right? It's the day Jesus is resurrected from the grave. It's the day we celebrate it, and um, it's a big day. And, you know, I've been preaching my heart out trying to challenge everybody to get relationship with friends and family and, and, and be the type of people that are inviters. And so I just want to encourage you that of any days of the year, even more over Christmas, if you just want to look at statistics, more people are, going to, are more likely to go to church on Easter than any other Sunday. And I believe just because we're getting at the tail end in the natural, I mean, we were at the tail end of COVID when it began because God already won it for us. But, but in the natural, people are catching up here, okay? People are hungry 
for a gathering. Yeah. People are hungry for church. So you might just be surprised uh, by talking to people. And you just might surprise yourself. I know we're real good at inviting, but listen to me. Listen to the spirit, what I'm saying. Stop inviting and go pick them up. I, I mean, I, I, I tell you, that that's the difference. Oh, I invited people, Pastor. I know, and I appreciate it. And we're supposed to do that. But there's nothing like, I mean, it, there's nothing like somebody picking you. You matter that much to me. I'll come get you. Or meet you for coffee first, because now coffee shops are open. <laughs> uh, you know, woo, uh, all these things. And, uh, and so it, there's just something about being together and inviting people into your circle of influence. And so I just encourage you, just, just be really bold this year and, uh, and just believe. There's some exciting, we'll tell you more. There, there's going to be a lot going on on Easter Sunday. Uh, have special things for the kids because we think that's very important. Again, it's just celebrating what God has done. And so I just want to encourage you, all right? You guys ready for that? All right, so uh, I'm going to jump right in today. Yep, this is good. Just jump right in today. Thank you, worship team, for just pausing and taking that time today. And, and I know every, some people are doing some new things and different. And you did great, Pastor. You know, we had Kristen up there giving us a little rhythm, you know. And, and uh, it was just good. It's just so neat. To, I love seeing people uh, stretch, uh, including all of you. And so uh, anyway, um, I, you know, I've been on this subject for so long. And I thought I could kind of get off of it, but it's like, no, because uh, I, I know what Pastor Kristen's going to teach next week. And, and I just, I just, I felt, I just didn't want her to get it all. So I wanted to like, I wanted to jump in a little ahead and, and kind of like, kind of lean into it. Because um, it was ministering to me, reading her notes, what she's going to share with you next week. And, uh, and, and we're leading up into Easter. And so it's just like, like, again, this is, this is, this is the Sunday of all Sundays. It, it, it just is. I mean, it's, it's what, what, what Pastor Dan reminded us over communion. It's everything that we celebrate. It's everything that we are. Everything is done through Jesus. And so, so before my, my, my titles were, my theme was just Jesus, but I've shortened it even more, all right? I've shortened it anymore. It's, now it's just hashtag Jesus. It's just, right, just Jesus, you know. We're on Jesus for a few weeks as we lead up into, into, um, into uh, Easter Sunday. And so... Uh, so I hope this uh, speaks to you. Uh, it spoke to me. And honestly, i got to tell you this ahead of time. Because usually when I write sermons, which I enjoy doing, and it always takes me a while. I mean, I, I spend, usually I change, I do it on Tuesday now, and I usually, I usually block out about six hours. And, and, and I work on that. And, but this time, I blocked out six hours, but it's, it's like I got the message in like 30 minutes. So I thought either that's good, I still kept working on it, and I still kept, okay, maybe I'll add, you know, but it's just like, this was so, and I got to thinking the reason this is so easy, because all I'm preaching to you today is what Jesus already did. So all I have to do is just kind of repeat what the word says about him, and so, so it's, it's, it's like, oh, Lord, is, is, should it always be this easy? And he said yes. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to that and, uh, and, and watch what he does, and so I hope you enjoy uh, what I have to share with you today because I believe it's going to give us a little bit of different angle as we get into Easter and in our Christian walk even deeper what the Lord really has for you. The title of today's sermon is just simply... Go, Peyton, go. <laughs> it is just hashtag Jesus, but it's overwhelming victory. And it's like, wow, that is our God. That is Jesus. There's, there's just, he has provided this victory, this overwhelming victory. That's why we get excited. That's why we're thrilled. And so today we're just going to kind of walk through about what Jesus did for us to give us this overwhelming victory. I just... Again, I just couldn't really get away of that from that word victory. And, um, and I don't know how you're doing today, honestly. I can tell by your expressions that we all had about an hour or less sleep. So it's one of two ways. Either you're more wired up because you, you had more coffee, or you're just like, hey, no big deal. You know, so, or you're a little sleepy. But no matter what, we had the victory, amen. So here, here we go. Um, because I, I, I want you walking away today, no matter what, at least having a, another level of understanding or revelation of victory than you had before. And I, I believe Jesus can do that. 
So let's go into Romans for a couple verses here. Romans 8.35 simply says this. It says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does, no, that's right. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or if we're persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? That's kind of been our story the last, what, year? You know, year and a half between calamities and sickness and fires and ice storms. And, you know, it's just been, it's just been crazy. And, uh, but does it mean, oh, I, I just don't love my people quite as much, so they're going to have to go through some stuff? No, that's not it at all. Verse 37, jump down. It says, despite, despite whatever's going on in your life, personal, community-wise, nationwide, worldwide, universe-wise, all right, no matter, despite all these things, he says this, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, through Christ who loved us. I mean, again, if you, if you can just hang on to that, if I can get you guys just to hang, if, you, if I could, like, like, put it on a hanger and put it on your body or something or, or wear it, it's just like no matter what's going on, all right, overwhelming victory is ours. In your version, a lot of versions read more than conquerors, all right, more than conquerors. We're more, more than conquerors through Christ because not only did Jesus conquer sin and death, all right, but he made a way, he did that, he made a way so we could conquer sin and death through him, so we could overcome, so we could be those overcomers with this overwhelming victory. Now, like I said, Easter's drawing very, very near. If you haven't heard, it's April 4th, all right, so just a few Sundays away from now, all right, it's coming up close. We celebrate his resurrection, and, and last year, you all may recall, I recall it very well, it was very lonely around here at Easter. Uh, we, uh, the, everything shut down, and uh, we had all these plans, and people had invested, actually financially invested in what we were going to do for the community, and, and all, we had postcards ready, we didn't mail them, I mean, the whole thing, we were just, we were ready, and uh, so that stopped, all right, but even through all that, um, I know that we're going to have victory this year, and, and I don't even need to say, oh, it's different, or this, or that, or the new, I don't know. All I know is it's every day is new with the Lord. Every day is fresh. Everything is a new beginning. And, and whatever he wants to do today is better than what I could have done a year ago. And so it's like his plans are what we're going to follow. And so, so, it's, so it's exciting. So number one, I want us to know this. Number one, the first point is this. We have victory because he has overcome. And I, I, I hope this makes sense. Because you may be saying, what? You know, uh, uh, he's overcome, but... But, uh, but, but how can I battle just even it was hard for me to get out of bed today, say, or, or an issue that you have or, or a concern for somebody. I saw some of you nod when I said that, get out of bed today. Um, just get out of bed, but, but how can you get up, Pastor, and say, boy, the Lord says the, he's already won, the victory's already won. Well, the reason is simple, but I'm going to go deeper than that. But the reason is simple, the, the first answer is because Jesus did defeat Satan. I mean, that, and that is ultimately it. He, he defeated Satan. It, it's done. You know, his last words on the cross is, it is, fin it is finished. You know, it, it is done. And again, we'll be reminded that on Easter. But um, honestly, sometimes, I'm just speaking to you as a person, it's hard to remember that because of the circumstances around us. It just, it just is. It, it, uh, things get kind of crazy sometimes and upsetting and we don't see the answer. And, and, but yet the Bible speaks of this fact so often in multiple areas that Jesus has the victory. He has the victory. And we, we want to keep that in the, in the forefront of our mind. He says in John, Jesus said this in John chapter 16, in the latter half of verse 33, he said this. He's talking to his disciples. And he says, but take heart, because why? I have overcome the world. Now, again, don't make fun of me, but when I read scripture, I'm very simple-minded. And I'm just like, I'm just like, Lord, what do you really mean by that? Because you know, he says that, but it hasn't happened yet. When he makes that statement, he had not gone to the cross yet. He had not yet suffered, died, buried, rose again on the third day. Do you get that? He's telling his disciples, don't fret. He didn't say, I will overcome the world. He already said, I have overcome the world before it happened. The thing that gets so crazy with me that I think with, with, with the Lord is time. You know, his time frame, we always say, well, it's different. I, I think what it is is the Lord has no time. It's just he's the beginning, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. It's just once he says something, whether it's going to happen yesterday, today, or tomorrow, it's true. 
So Jesus could say, without any doubt, to those disciples, I have overcome the world, even though they didn't quite get it yet, and he hadn't actually physically gone through what was happening. Does that make sense? Yeah, again, I'm just like, I'm just like reading that, reading that. He's encouraging them about, really about what they're to face, because Jesus knew many of them would be martyred, many of them would suffer, would, be, would die, they'd have to stand up, they'd be persecuted. So he's telling them ahead of time, don't worry guys, I got you covered. I've overcome the world. He tells them in a, in a, in a past tense. When do, God declares something to be true, it's true. I, I, if you walk away again from anything today, if God declares it, it happens. It happens, all right? So when we face a spiritual battle, our battle is already won. I don't think you got it. When you face a battle, all right, a big one's coming. Before you even begin, according to God, according to Jesus, who stated it to the disciples for all of us to hear, hey, I've already overcome. You've already won. I think that's good news. That's good news, all right? So we have to do this, the first fill in there. We've got to stand firm. Stand firm. Many scriptures about this in, in the Word both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but, but we got to stand firm in that victory because the enemy and our own little brains are going to want to pull you away from that. Well, how could this happen? Or look at all this going on and all this crazy stuff going on. I'm going to take us back to an Old Testament account. And I love these, I love these, uh, the names of these tribes because they're easy for me, not because of the first half, but because of the second half, they all end in I-T-E-S, ites. They're all a bunch of ites, okay? So you got, in this account, you got the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some Meunites, I don't know, they declared war on, Je war on Jehoshaphat. So they, they were like, they were, they were against Israel's army, and they had declared war. And there was reason for anyone in the natural to be afraid because you got all these ites after you. You know, every tribe around there, they're coming after you. They wanted to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. And, uh, and, and this is the word given to them. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17, I chose English Standard because it used the word that I wanted to use. I'm just transparent. It says this, verse 17. You will not need to fight this battle. What are they supposed to do? Stand firm. Stand firm. Not only stand firm, hold your position. Don't waver. Don't back down. All right? Stand firm. Hold your position. And watch me do what I'm going to do. See the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Now, if he did it in the Old Testament, all right, he can do it in the New Testament. He, he'll, he'll just keep doing it. That's, that's our kind of God. They still had to put on the armor, right? Because he said stand firm. He didn't say take off your, your gear and all that kind of stuff and just hang out. No, they're at attention. Get your armor on. Get there ready. Stand firm. They still had to march. They still had to move forward and do what they were called to do. But God had already given them the victory before anything happened. Man, if we could get that in our heads. Just everyday life. Everyday life. We get the victory before it even happens. In the same way that God gave the Israelites their victory, we have been given victory in Jesus' name. See how easy the sermon is? Because I just, I just, it's just all written out in Scripture for us. It's like, thank you, Lord. This is just so easy. But we still have to armor up. Well, I'm just going to sit back. If I won the victory, I'm just going to sit home on Sunday mornings. You know, I'm just going to, whatever I like to do, watch TV or call my friends, whatever it is. I'm just going to do that. That's not what the word tells us to do. The victory is ours, but God expects something from us. He wants us to stand. So what we want to do is number two. We've got to know you're not standing alone. You've got, you got yourself divine weapons divine weapons, all right? Divinely powered weapons. It's not the weapon itself that I'm too excited about or concerned about. It's the source behind the power. The divine source, the divine power that the Lord has for us. He's already won, so why wouldn't you want to use those weapons instead of your own? Why wouldn't you want to use the ones God's put in our hands, put in our grip, put in our minds, put in a word 
He already did it for us. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. Divine power to demolish strongholds. In verse 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And here's what we do. Because of these divinely powered weapons, we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Remember when we were transitioning from worship and into this time, and, and one of the things I felt the Lord encouraging me, probably because I reviewed these notes this morning, is just take captive of those thoughts. You were already using them this morning when, when, when the Holy Spirit's presence was amongst us. He was already in us, but then we felt his presence. And, and there's nothing the enemy would like more to say, oh, don't listen to that. Be worried about this. You know, all that kind of stuff. That's when you take, that's when you do this. You take captive those thoughts you you were using before you even knew it or maybe you already knew it would I ask you to do that you are using the divine power of a weapon God has given you isn't that awesome I, 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 all you did was show up for church I think it's awesome or listen online all right we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ basically the way to think of it is we've been given the nuclear codes all right nuclear codes are the heavens to fight for us you got the button. You, you have whatever you need to fight. His power is literally working right now as we gather. He's in our midst. So let's don't glaze over it, all right? And I want to focus just for a second. I kind of divert here because we're going to talk a little bit about the weapons real briefly in a couple of minutes. But I, I want you to know what I believe and I believe Scripture teaches is the most powerful weapon you have, the most powerful I mean, we're going to talk about the word. We're going to talk about, because it, it's important. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's key, what, part of the, the armor that we put on. But the most powerful one that you have available to you right away is worship. It's just, it is, it is, it is, it is divine. It is full of strength. Um, it, it is when you start your day, I hope you begin with worship. When, notice when we start a service. We don't start with worship just because, well, that's how churches do it. You just kind of you just do worship first, and then hopefully people will show up. And all that. That's not why we do it. We start worship on time because we're ready, because we're entering into, his presence is going to be here no matter what. But there's something about when we are in unity, and you just, you sense it and, and express. We sang that song, Graves into Gardens. I got the bridge up here, Peyton. You'll show Graves into Gardens. You know, they're just one of the lines, you know, this, this is, you're, when you're proclaiming it, when you're singing it, okay, this is God, your worship. God, you turn graves into gardens. It's amazing. I'm mean, hoping you're singing it. You're not just singing the words. You're thinking about that. Again, that's the way my mind works. It's just, it just goes on because I think about that. And then you turn bones into armies. You think about, you think about, about people just, 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 well, just, there's so many ways you can think about that. But all of separate, we're just a bunch of bones. But together we're an army. We're an army of the Lord. And, and, we, and he turns us into that. And then I love that when you turn seas into highways. I don't know where your mind goes. Mine goes to the Red Sea. You know, I'm thinking, you know, he's got, got the sea. And the, and the Lord goes before him, just parts it, you know, and, and makes it a highway. You know, I don't care if you've seen the movie or not. I know it's a dry, it's like, it's a dry hype. They're just like, boom, there they go, you know. And you, you see them get through, and then, uh, then afterwards it closes in all the chariots and the water hits them. And okay. You're the only one who can. That's the way we worship. That make, When you worship that day, when you're singing, when you let the Lord, the Holy Spirit mix with, with his word and, and what he's meaning to you, it changes your whole level. And you've already set yourself up at that point using divine power just to, the enemy said, I'm not going to mess with you, I'll go to somebody else. It's just because you're tuned to what God is and what he wants to do. So number three, we overcome through Christ, we're divinely powered, and now we, we actually engage in spiritual warfare. Number three, we actually engage in it. We don't just sing about it, although that's important, but we actually, the Bible is real clear, even with the Israelites, they had to still engage. The battle's already won, but it wasn't a time to sit back. It's time to, to move forward. Victory is made away for us because here's the truth. Excuse me, Colossians 2. A couple of verses here. Colossians 2. You were dead because of your sins. And because of your sinful nature, because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. So picture that. Before, if you've not yet given your life to the Lord, before you've accepted Christ, 
there's this sinful nature that was still just like mixed in your spirit. It's just there. It's just, and it's overriding you. And the Bible's real clear there that when you, that the Lord wants to cut that out of you, all right, and get that out of you. And then he goes, it was not yet cut away. But then something happens. This is how God cuts it away. Then God made you alive through Christ. Then you said, Lord, I'm done with my old ways. Jesus, come into my life. I want to serve you. I repent for what I've done. I want to serve you. He cuts out the old, makes your spirit brand new, and he forgives all our sins. And I like this next line in verse 14. And I honestly just read this this morning, so you're going to hear me babble on here. So don't, don't think too much of this. But verse 14 says, He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. The devil's trying to take the word cancel and use it for him. You know, cancel culture. That's the first thing that the Lord said. Only I can cancel, he said. Only people can try and erase things. They can get rid of things. But I just, it just slid up to me. It's like, man, no wonder it upsets me so much when I hear people talking about canceling this and that. It's just not the things. It's like, no, it's only God's job. God cancels the bad. God cancels the evil and fills it with his righteousness. Anyway, don't read too much of that. I didn't study it. It just hit me this morning. Okay, so. Oh, I thought so. I thought, thank you, Lord. I thought, yeah, that's good. Okay, um, verse 15. In this way, what did he do? He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over the cross. Our enemies disarmed. Jesus is saying, go for it. That's what he's saying. They're disarmed. Go for it. Stop holding back. Stop feeling bad. Stop shutting down. Go forward. So here's what we're supposed to do. He says, the first fill in there, the bullet there, point there. We've got to put on every piece of spiritual armor that he's given us. We put on that armor so we can go, 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 what he wants us to do. So we're, he's actually given us tools. Not only has he gone before us and made the path straight, not only has he gone before us to give us the victory, but he actually shields us because he cares so much about us that he wants us to feel comfortable as we move forward in him. By comfortable, I mean safe. Again, the real word of safe, the real meaning of safe, safe in Christ. That's, that's what he's talking about. He's, I got, you, I got your back. We've got to wear every piece, he says, every day. And a lot of you know these, but I'll remind us. Ephesians 6, verse 13 says this. Therefore, put on every. I highlighted that. I think sometimes I just put on one or two each day. Okay? God has you covered. He wants them all on. He says, put on every piece of God's armor. Why? So you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, okay, so again, you got this armor on, okay, the battle's going to move forward because you're, you're moving forward. But he goes, then after the battle that he has won for you, you're going to do something. You just keep standing. Stand firm. Don't take your, don't take your armor off. <laughs> just stand firm, all right? Stand firm. Then he says, verse 14, stand your ground. And then he addresses it, put on the belt of truth. There is no truth but Jesus. Every truth comes from him. I said, somebody, Pastor Dan said, every, you said, I think during communion, just, it hit me, just everything comes from Jesus. Everything. Or maybe it was in worship. I, somewhere. Every answer. That's right. Every answer comes from him. The belt of truth. Um, the body armor of God's righteousness. 15. Uh, 15, for shoes, put on peace that come from the good news. And so you've heard of the gospel of peace that you put on so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith. Stop those fiery arrows from the devil because he sends them. He's not going to stop sending them. But you said, don't worry, I got you. I got you covered. You got, you got a shield there, all right? And then take the sword of the spirit. And, and you know how the word teaches, the last is first, the first shall be last. Or no, the first shall be last, the last is first. The last is, the, this is the best part, I think, you know. He saved this, you know. The, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's your Bible. It's the written Word. It's the spoken Word. It's the memorized Word. Take that with you. Daily acknowledge these things in your spiritual battle. Claim the protection God's given you by acknowledging that belt of truth. Uh, what I'm hearing, Jesus, that don't sound like the truth. Only you have the truth. Let him direct you back each day. 
I have those shoes of peace. Boy, when I see people, yeah, inside I'm still frustrated. I get a little upset with people, but I'm going to bring peace to people. I'm gonna, people are going to know me as a person of peace. I'm not a person of division. That's just going to cause all kinds of things to flare up. I'm going to be a person of peace as I walk forward. I'm going to have shield of faith. I don't care what kind of doubt tries to come upon me. I'm going to quench that doubt. And I say, I got faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He won this battle. He's going to take care of it. Even if you get a bad report from a doctor, bad report from your employer, bad report from your whatever. No, I know the truth. I know Jesus. I have faith. Helmet of salvation. That's ultimately what we're here for, Lord. Just there's nothing better than the, than the, than the forgiveness of Christ and, and the eternity you have planned for us. And you let us be a part of that. Lord, help us do that and help us, helps us to shed that or spread that. Uh, throughout the world. And then finally, of course, that sword of the spirit, the word, there's just nothing like it. So here we are. Standing firm. I'm looking at all you guys, even though you're sitting. You are standing firm, all right, because the word has reminded us of these things. Fully acknowledging the, the, that the battle has already been won. Oh, but I still don't have money in my checkbook. Well, I still got to go to work and face us. Well, I still have this report from the doctor. Well, Again, you have to. In God's timing, it's already won. If Jesus could say it before it happened, as an example to us, we have to say it before it happened and believe the truth of God's word. In other words, what I want us to do, number four, the final point that we'll have just a couple more moments that I want to share with you, is, is we, have to, we have to change our, our, our perspective, all right? Our perspective on things is so important. Our perspective or position I like that word, actually, position better. I should have used that instead. But your position is so critical. When you come into church, I hope your position is ready to worship. You just, for some people, you're ready, you're raring, you're ready to go. For some people, they need some quiet time before. Whatever you need, you need to be in that position where you're, where you're ready to go, where God wants you to, take, to go. Um, and, the, and the wrong, I think, position is to think nothing's going to happen. This isn't going to change much. I'll go to church because my mom says I have to or my boyfriend says I do. I don't know. You know, you just, you can do that and you'll get by and you'll probably be blessed while you're here. But you have to have a position. Lord, today, it is about me. It's about me and you, what you want to do in me. And like we say, here I am, God. I'm yours. We're surrendering to him. Take me. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go do it. So we want that, pers we want that perspective. And, and the right way, I think, to walk into that is just to thank him. You just walk in thanking him. Thank you. The wrong position is walking in not thanking. You just, you, no matter what, what situation, you thank him before you know you've secured the victory. The most powerful weapon you have is coming to the Lord, like I said earlier, and just worshiping him and just thanking him ahead of time, all right? Thank him and praise him because you're fighting with God's powerful weapons. Now, I'm going to give you a closing scripture in just a minute, but I want to give you one last image. Again, this is just the way my crazy mind thinks. Because as I thought through this, it's like, Lord, sometimes it's hard to be excited about what's going to happen because of what you're going through right now. You know, I know, your, Lord, your, your word promises that, we're going to see the victory. You've won the victory. You're going to provide it. It doesn't say I'm not going to go through hard times, but it says that I will be victorious. And so, so we know that. So I want you to do this. I want you to all pretend you, uh, you can do pretend one of two things. You can pretend you're a teenager going to your first concert. Some of us, that's way back. To me, it was at, what's the stadium in Corvallis? Riggs? Reeser. I think it was um, Hart going to see them as a teenager. I think it was. And so you picture that. Or picture, remember those old Mervyn's commercials? Open, open, open. Okay. Picture yourself like they changed Thanksgiving this year. You don't wait in line. But waiting in line, what I'm trying to get you to do is picture yourself waiting in line for an event you're so excited for. So that first concert, getting the best deals at the store. And so you're waiting in line. And, and so... And all of a sudden, you're back there, and you think, oh, man, by the time these doors are open, I'm going to, there's going to be nothing left. I'm going to have the worst seats in the house. I'm going to, uh, you know, that big screen TV I want is not going to be available. You know, you think that. I want you to picture yourself being there, and then I want you to, like, see Jesus at the front of the line, 
and he's doing, come here. This is what I meant about it being you. I want you to be, for just a moment, because if you're going to say, Lord, here I am, everything is you, whatever you want me to do, Lord, he's going to put you in first place. Some of us are not comfortable being in first place because we think, oh, that's being real. No. He pulls, he's pulling you to the front of the line. And the thing about Jesus, he's so gracious. Picture this. He pulls you to the front of the line, and then he steps out so it doesn't upset those people. But you know what? When you're walking that front line, what kind of looks are you getting from all those people? Oh, they're dirty looks. What are you, what are you, what are you doing getting to be in front? They're jealous. They're irritated. That's how the enemy works. Listen to me. This is, this is, this is revelation to some of you. I believe it's the Spirit of God. God doesn't want you in the first place just for you. <laughs> But God has a way, a way for you to be in the first place to make a way for others to follow. And don't worry about the looks you get. Don't worry about what other people think. God has a way of taking care of everything. Because 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know. I don't know about you for sure. But this position of victory that Jesus wants me at the front of the line that Jesus wants you at the front of the line it makes me a little uncomfortable but I believe that's where he wants us to walk today it's not a control issue it's not that you're better than anybody else but God needs you in the position to do what you're supposed to do and some of you in the sound of my voice you've been holding back you're not, you're not letting yourself get in that front position because you're looking at yourself. And look, believe me, if you look at yourself, I'm, just, I'm with you. I don't deserve the position. I don't even deserve to be on this pulpit. It's only because of Jesus that I can do it. Our perspective, our position, as we are where we are, we are where we are supposed to be because we exalt Jesus. We worship him. He lives in us. And he's the one that puts us where we're supposed to be. As we watch the news, if you do that still. As you face personal struggles. Never forget. Never forget. The battle's already won. The battle's already won. And Jesus has the right position for you. It's not based on what you can or can't do. It's what he says about you. So that's my final point today. My victory comes from Jesus Christ. All right, let's go ahead and just put our notes away. Let me just pray over you, and, and we'll, we'll close and finish up here. Thank you, Lord, for your plan for us today. Lord, we began just by worshiping you. Lord, there's, there's no one like you. You're the king of all kings. We're where we are today because of you. And so, Lord, we just, we thank you for the position you've given us in life. We thank you that you've caused us to be born at this season of life, in this time. We thank you, Lord, that, that we're able to know you. We thank you, Lord, that you continually set us free from those things that hold us back. We thank you, Lord, that you've helped us discover those gifts and callings in us so that we can truly step in the front of the line where you've called us to have victory and do what you've called us to do. So, Father, we declare, as we have on our armor every day, we're going to stand firm. We refuse to listen to the enemy. We refuse to listen to our own minds that don't line up with you. But instead, we look to your word and your truth. Father, from this point forward, we purpose to stop using our own weapons and use divinely powered weapons from you. And Father, we're not afraid to engage in any kind of spiritual warfare because you've already done the battle. You've already won it. So we thank you, God, for that victory that comes from you. Within the sound of my voice, I'm about to let you go, but if there's anybody who has not yet said, Jesus, I really need you in my life. <laughs> I, I kind of been fighting these battles on my own. And I'm lost without you. But you, you just sense in yourself right now, it's like, man, 
I need a Savior. I need Jesus. If that's you, we're going to say a prayer together. Can I encourage you? If you're in the room here, just lift your hand and then put it down just so I can acknowledge you, not publicly, but just so I can be praying for you. If you're listening, just acknowledge to the Lord. But is there anybody in the room today that would say, you know what, I need Jesus. He's not in my life. Let's all pray this prayer together. Say, Father God, thank you for Jesus. Because of him, the battle has been won. In order to be victorious, I need you, Jesus, in my life. I repent of my sin and the things that I've done that are against you. I know, God, that you rose Jesus from the dead to set me free. I declare it with my mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Won't you all stand with me? Peyton, why don't you turn us off the internet? Thank you for joining us online. I just want to encourage you with a couple things as you go today.